YouTube, it is Rob, and welcome to my guide on a technique I call modular pulling. Uh, this is a guide for enchanters who may be either new to the class or just have not had too much experience with pulling as they've been leveling up and want to <clears throat> give it a try. Um, so I'm going to start by just giving you some reasons to do it, um, then we'll go into the basics of the technique, and then we'll finish off with some more advanced techniques. Okay, so uh, starting off here, why do we want to pull? Okay, so the number one reason to pull is because it's fun. Okay, uh, it is an extremely fun thing to do. I like to do it. It gives you control over uh, the flow of EXP to your group. Uh, it's enjoyable to do. It's kind of like a little mini game, like a puzzle solving mini game. And I'll show you a little bit more about that as we go. And uh, it's enjoyable. <coughs> Number two, uh, enchanters can pull as good, I will say as good as any other class. Not going to say we can pull better, but we can do it as good as any other class, and we can do it uh, with a very minimal amount of time actually spent out in the field pulling. So that's that's an advantage. Um, you know, uh, if you got a monk in your group, you still want to pull a lot of the times because a monk can sit there doing DPS. Well, you can go out, grab one, come back and very little DPS, uh, potential group DPS loss. So there, there's an advantage there for the enchanter to pull. So <coughs> the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start out, uh, I'm going to show you each step, and then each next step will build upon the last step, OK? So we want to pull something, OK? So step one is, you know, phase one, pulling a single. All right, so there's the single bat right out there. It's by itself. Uh, we're going to say for, uh, you know, uh, just as an example, this shard thing is going to be uh, the, our group. Like we're going to pretend our group is, in, you know, in this area. This is the, where the group's making their camp uh, for purposes of this demonstration here. Um, <coughs> so let's just say they're there. They're fighting a monster. It's starting to get low. Uh, you feel like it's ready. It's time to pull another one. So okay. So step one, pulling a single. You know, stand back, pull it with Tash, wait a little bit because you want it to get kind of close to your group. Um, you can wait even longer than that. Um, so you wait a little bit, uh, you uh, tash it, it runs at you, you mez it, you slow it, you blur it, um, and now it's sitting there waiting uh, for the group to finish their kill over here. The tank's finished his kill, he runs over here, he smacks it, doesn't even need to wait for taunt to come up, you know, no matter what the situation is, he comes over, turns on attack, it aggroes him, he can drag it back into the group or whatever. Um, they can just fight it right there. Um, <clears throat> so this is the situation you want to create, okay? You have a, at all times at least one, uh, preferably just one, uh, mezzed, slowed, and blurred monster in the queue, as I call it. It's queued up, it's waiting to be killed. All the tank has to do is run up and smack it once and then start fighting it, okay? So there's no downtime at all in between uh, one kill to the next. So he starts fighting that, okay, so it's back in the queue, or they're fighting it. Now you're ready, okay, so that's step one, pulling a single, okay. Step two, pulling two mobs that are t uh, close together, that's a, a double as I call them. So these two, uh, uh, whatever they're called, gloom lords, are an example of two um, uh, of a double pull. If I pull one, they'll both come. So what I want to do here, uh, first thing I want to show you is uh, one of the most important buffs that you can have on yourself is levitation for a puller, and I'll show you why here in a second. Let me get myself buffs on there. All right, so if I wanted to pull one there, you see it says you cannot see your target, but I go ahead and put levitation on myself, exact same spot, <coughs> um, but now with levitation, um, as you can see, I can uh, pull him. So, so there's a double there. Um, so what I want to do to pull a double is you lead with flash. The other one comes at you. Uh, it's handy if you target him, um, like before you turn around. But uh, in any case, get over here, and then this is just a repeat. Okay. So you turn to single, um, or you turn to double pull. So you mess him. Um, you turn to a double pull into two single pulls. So then you tash him, and you slow him and you blur him now he's ready to be killed now depending on how fast your group is killing you can uh, this this last step here is optional um, 
but uh, you can come back and you can blur this guy or you can um, you know you can tash him and slow him too <coughs> Uh, it's it's totally up to you. It, this is now now you just turned a double into two singles. So this is why I call it modular because that's the whole like mini game. Uh, it's a series of puzzles. You're trying to essentially turn everything into a single pull. Um, so but the the single and then the double those are your two basic um, techniques because most things can be divided up into singles and doubles. So, all right, so we've got those two techniques down. We've got our single, we've got our double pull, and the double pull is really just two singles. Um, and then you do the exact same debuff technique uh, that you did with the single. Okay, so there's two. So you've got your single and your double. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> those are the two uh, uh, basic tools that you'll be using. Okay, so now let's go. And we'll take those tools um, and we'll apply them to larger pulls. Okay, now there's a trick to pulling. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about right here. Okay, so in here, what I've got here is I've got a, there's five of them in here, but these four right here are close enough together so that if I pull uh, this one, all of them will come. And I'll just demonstrate that now so you understand that they are all linked together. They're all within angro range of this guy right here. So I'll just pull him, and then I'll just blur my aggro real quick because I just wanted to show you. So you see one, two, three, four, they're all linked together. Um, so how do I single pull this? Well, I'll show you. Now, the, the way this system works, the way EQ works is that it will take whatever one that you choose to uh, engage, like your point of initiation, your ag point of aggro, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for that example I showed you there, I chose this guy, uh, I aggroed him, the game will check everything that is within, uh, it will check around this guy, it will look, look around him and see are there any of his friends around him that are within aggro range? And yes, in this case there were. He was in the range, he was in range, and that one was in range. This one is over here. He's his friend, but he's too far away. Okay, so he's outside of aggro range, so he did not come. So, um, now, how can we uh, abuse that? So, what you do is if I was to use this as the point of initiation, point of aggro, and I, uh, I aggro this guy, it will check around him, and it will only find this one here as as being linked to him. So it's it's only he's the only one that's in range of this guy if this is the point of initiation. Okay, so I, I go for the ones that are on the outsides, and <coughs> if I do that, these guys won't come. Okay, because they are linked to him, but they are not linked to him. So you see what I'm saying? So this is a chain of mobs that are linked uh, together but they're not each piece isn't linked to each other so they're all linked to the center guy but only the center guy is linked to this outside guy so I'll show you what happens now we can take a look make sure I got all my buffs and stuff up here I do um, so if I do so if I pull that back guy with flash see it's a single pull only one comes so, boom, I just mess him, tash, slow. It's, you see here I would be dragging that one that came all the way back to group or whatever, but um, tash, slow, blur. Now that's the repeat. So you see that's the same uh, technique as I used on just the single pull, because that's really what it was. It was a single pull. And, you know, you can go back and uh, blur that guy. He blurred from the sometimes mez will auto blur them but so you see so then we'll kill this one and then the next so pretend he's dead the next time I'll come and I'll pull him and that's now that's a single pull because there's nothing in range um, of this guy so I'll pull him back to group now he's pulled now we've got these two left these two are linked together uh, but that's really just a double pull like we saw with those two uh, gloom lords and then I'll, you know, I'll pull this one with flash. This one comes, and I'll come back to this one. So you see, this is what I mean by modular pulling. And there's not nothing wasted here. This is all happens very fast. You don't have to sit around mezzing and blurring and breaking all kinds of uh, uh, mezzes and roots and stuff. Um, you know, you just come over here, 
boom. Uh, you know, you pick it out, one on the outside, you mez that one, and you know that the whole pile isn't going to come, you know, in this case only one came, but even if it was two, uh, you know, the, you just drag them out and mez as you go back to base. Um, <clears throat> but you see, that's that's the idea here. You, you, you target the ones on the outside that are farther away, and then it won't uh, bring the whole pile to you. So I turned, in this case, I've turned uh, a four, a group of four, into... Uh, a couple groups of singles and doubles, and the doubles are of course just singles, easy, easy peasy to do. So that's how you do uh, with multiples, and then th that's the whole pulling game. You know, if you see a cluster of them, you figure out how you can uh, break them down into groups of twos and ones, um, and so that's that's how you do it. Now, okay, so well, you know, wait, wait, what if I have a scenario where you know they're all close together and there's no way that you're going to break them up. So I'm going to show you, uh, you know, even more pulls and more techniques in a different uh, zone here. I think, oh, I didn't get the mission. I'll just get the mission real quick. Oh, I did get the mission. Okay, good. So, sorry about this. It's going to take them a couple seconds to prepare the zone. Um, so, in any case, so you see why I call the system modular because you learn that you know you learn step one and you learn step two, and then you just make bigger pulls into just uh, just modules of those two. So, like you know that group of four is just a group of uh, of ones and twos. So let's take a look now, see if I can go in. All right, here we go. Zoning in, hold on, guys. Sorry, you can't bind right in these zones, unfortunately, these instances. Otherwise, I would have done that. just don't think you can. Um, okay. Let me, let me get hail. Oh, this is a little trick here, by the way, guys. She wants to give you hail her. You can repeat that. You can quit the mission and go in and out and get four um, alternate currency each time just by hailing her. So if you need some alternate currency, like a, just an easy way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so in this case, all right, so you see I've got a group of bugs there. There's one, two, three, four, five. Um, looks like just five of them. I thought there was six. All right, so... Now this that that technique I showed you with the uh, beetles applies here. It applies here as well. Like if I pull this one on the outside here, only uh, the center two. I don't even think that one will come. Um, <clears throat> all right, and same for the other sides. But if I pull in the middle, the whole pile comes. So I'm going to pull in the middle, and we're going to pretend like this is a group of five that is completely linked, and there's no way that uh, you know they're just too close together to use the uh, aggro radius technique that I showed you on the last one so I pull and yeah all five are gonna come I'm standing far back here cast my beam of slumber alright so the first one I cast regular mez on because I know that one was pulled with tash it's gonna land second one I cast flash mez on the one in the back or one of the ones in the back I cast night stasis on and then just re start regular mezzing these two. Okay, so then the last one, it, whether you can get it or not, oh, please don't die. All right. So it, normally, what I would do is for that last one, I would pull him the him back to group. So if it's a group of five, you have time enough to guarantee get at least four of a mezz. The last one you might not be able to get on the fifth before uh, beam of slumber wears off. So you can just pull that last one back to group. And if it's four, then it's easier because you have plenty of time but uh, so that's my technique for that and then I'm just gonna clear my aggro here all right oops let's use the right spell um, okay so that that's one way to do it <coughs> and who didn't make it you all right 
So that's one way of doing things, okay? So, and then you can break it up from there. You know, you can use plenty of your other abilities once you get them all messed like that. They're, you know, under your control to use your uh, beguilers and so on and so forth. And uh, Beam of Slumber has a nice quick cooldown, 26 seconds. It'll be up and ready for you to use uh, well before you're done killing uh, those five monsters. So, uh, that that's a trick. So you pull them, you pull one with Tash, you know, assuming they can't be broken up. Now those, that group there that I showed you, that can be broken up. And, uh, I'll, you know, let me just get a quick heal real quick. Um, and I will demonstrate that. Okay, so I will demonstrate that uh, that those can be broken up. Are they all back there? No. Mm, whoop -de -doo. Come on, goofball. You know, oh, that one's that's right. Okay, that one's got night nightmare stations on it, so it's lasting longer. So uh, <clears throat> what I will do is I will tash that. This is what I call my mez breaker. And then you cast your blur on that. All right, now it should go back to its home as soon as the stun wears off. So to break Mez, you you tash it, you stun it, you use your Gorilla Wrangler staff, which is a free item given in a Catacostra mission. Uh, let me just inspect this so you guys can see here. It uh, has a 0.5 second casting time, and it does 100 damage, and it's unresistible. So it's a fantastic Mez breaker. <coughs> Oh, he's snared from that stupid, um, he's snared from that, uh, what you call it, uh, nightmare stasis, I forgot about that. So he's going to hang out there for a while, but, um, in any case, I can show you that, you know, if you, you can break these things up. So, okay, this will, this will work now. So if I target that one on the, the outside there, and I do my standard technique there, see the, the ones in the middle came but the one from the left side did not come. So you can break them up into easier things like that. And now this becomes a double, and the one over there is a single, and then it's just a repeat of what you just did there. So hopefully you guys can see uh, my way of pulling, my modular technique. It's, you know, you get the single and you get the double down, and then, oops, get the hammer off me. Uh, in any case, you get the single, you get the double, and then you just turn larger pulls like that into just um, multiple, you know, just multiple singles and doubles. So hopefully you guys like my technique. Um, you can. There's lots of other ways to do it. I'm going on record now saying that this is not the only way to pull. This is just my way. It works for me. Um, <clears throat> I like to do it because it's the. If you do it like that, you can go quick. You know, you're just essentially pulling a lot of stuff with. Uh, either Tash or Flash Mez, which is both of them cast very quickly, and uh, there's minimal downtime spent pulling, and you can count on this system to work for you every single time. You don't have to worry about, oh, I got resisted, or I did this or that. Those, If you use Flash and Tash to pull, you'll get the exact same results each and every time. So hopefully you guys like my system. Let me know if you uh, have any um, trolls or flames. I won't delete anything from my YouTube thread, so go ahead and put all your trolls and flames and comments on the YouTube, <clears throat> uh, and I will respond to them. Uh, hopefully you guys thumbs up. Let me know if you, if you do something different, and please use this technique. Uh, use part of it. Use none of it. Use all of it. Uh, however you want to do it. Uh, you, you can adapt your own style into this is the point of this. It, it's not made to be the, the only thing you do, so this is just like sort of a basic way of doing it. Um, the only other very final thing that I'll show you, you can do, uh, let's just wait a sec here, I gotta pat away, um, is if you don't have Beam of Slumber, uh, then you can use the uh, Beguilers, the AOE Beguilers. Uh, as a substitute for that and then you just go through exactly the same way as I use Beam of Slumber and boom 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 and hit them. Now the Beam of Slumber has an advantage just because it's almost impossible for them to resist that and then you also see that um, that sometimes the Beguilers gets resisted and stuff. So uh, that's just a you know an adaptation if you don't have a, uh, access to that. Um, okay.
Okay, so let me get rid of that. Aggro, and there we go. So substitute Beguilers for Beam of Slumber if you don't have Beam of Slumber. And if you do have Beam of Slumber, then use that because it's great. Uh, thanks for watching. Thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Appreciate it. Bye.